Shalom, 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 Shalom. I'm going to set the knock on you. Okay, you can go. Alright. So, uh, Shalom, Shalom. Alright, we brothers here. Uh, from Great Millstone, Atlanta Camp. Um, you know, with another lesson. The Lord willing, we open prayer is edifying. Uh, before we get started, of course, we want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Makai Kodash. All right, and also double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone and Rumi Teach Well. And uh, peace, salutation, and much love to the elect of Israel scattered around the four corners of the earth that have given our diligence to make that calling of election sure. All right, um, like I say, you know, we're coming back in the spirit uh, with another lesson. Uh, going into uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter, uh, breakdown. You know, as you've been seeing, you know, we've been uh, doing weekly segments on... Uh, on 2 Thessalonians, going through the chapters to give the uh, the sense of what Paul was speaking to these particular churches, um, you know, in the, in the gospel, okay? Uh, so without further ado, you know, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and we hope and pray that it's edifying. Uh, it's uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course mm -hmm. and be glorified even as it is with you. That's right. So, you know, this, you know, me and the, uh, the brother Rochers, I we just did a video earlier about let the word have free course, you know, and, um, you know, you know, uh, you know, with previous uh, guys that was a part of the camp, um, you know, it was hard for the spirit of the Lord to have free course, okay, because everything that was brought to, to, to their attention, it was always either thrown to the side or, or, or shut down or it was stifled, okay? When you go into the word quench, where it says quench not the spirit, it means to stifle. All right? And when you stifle certain things, it's like you, 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 you're throwing off the course of the spirit. All right? To where, you know, if this brother have a question, if he asks me a question about a particular topic um, in the scriptures or a particular breakdown, and I just, ah, whatever, man. I don't feel like talking about that right now. All right? When you quench in the spirit, if the word is not having free course, the spirit is not having free course. Okay? Go ahead, bro. Uh, verse 2, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Yeah, and the Lord delivers the elect from wicked and unreasonable men. All right? Meaning they don't possess the, 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 the mentality of, of, of being logical. Mm -hmm. All right? They're unreasonable. All right? There's no reasoning with certain guys. All right? They're always right. they always, you know, uh, you know, the, the big dog, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in that mindset, man, okay? You don't want to be the, the know-it-all. You don't want to be the, 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 the book one, all right? The encyclopedia. Now, it's good to have a certain level of knowledge, all right? But you still have to be reasonable, okay? You got to be a reasonable individual. That's why the Lord called us into this thing, so that we can have the, the spirit of discernment, all right? Which is understanding, all right? When you have the understanding of the how about you know shy, you, you, you will see that you will still have a lot more to understand. All right? But if you're unreasonable, then you're pretty much like a brute beast. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go ahead, bro. Yeah, Tyler. Yep. You know, like there, you, know, you know, you know it all. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 2, starting at the top again. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. That's right. You could say all men have not faith. And why is that? Because faith is a gift that's given to us uh, from Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, uh, grab Ephesians uh, chapter 2 and verse 8. All right, the scriptures tell you that, that faith is a gift. Okay? You know, it, it, it is something that must be given to you first and foremost. So if you don't have that gift of faith, first and foremost, the Lord is basically, he's, he's not dealing with you. Okay? He's not dealing with you if you don't have that spirit of faith, man. All right? Because it's a gift. It's something that's given to you. Okay. All right? Go ahead, bro. This is uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, mm -hmm. and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. Right. That's right. So it's talking about the, the actual faith. Faith is a gift of the Most High. All right? And it's given to us as like a present. All right? And what do you do when somebody gives you a gift? Or uh, they show, or they showing. When somebody gives you a gift, first and foremost, they showing the level of, you know, uh, regard. They showing that they were thinking about you. 
So when you get when you receive that gift, you're supposed to be what? You're supposed to be cheerful. You're supposed to treasure that gift. And you're supposed to utilize that gift to show a, 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 uh, an expression of uh, thanks. So when we have faith in Yahweh Bashem Shai, when we continue to believe and continue to work and continue to do His work, continue to build upon the tabernacle of David, that is showing a sign of gratitude to Yahweh Bashem Shai. We're showing that we're thankful to be a part of this. We're, we're thankful that, that we have this opportunity to do these videos. We're thankful that we can go to the highways and byways and, and speak this word. We're thankful that when we open up the scriptures and begin to read, we, 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 we then understand. Okay? That's an expression of gratitude when you believe. When you, when you take that gift of faith that the Lord gave us and we show that we appreciate it through what we do with the faith. Okay? Now you can go back to that, uh, that Thessalonians, bro. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? Mm -hmm. Verse 4, and we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that you both do and will do the things which we command you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord direct your heart into and the Lord direct your heart into the love of the Most High, and unto patience waiting for Hamashiach. Uh-huh. And into the patient waiting for Hamashiach. You know, these things are the thing of patience. You gotta be patient. While waiting for the hour by some hour's child. You can't be frustrated. Mm -hmm. Alright? Certain things ain't happening on your time. It ain't happening on your watch. Alright? You expecting certain things to take place at a certain time. Um, and then when it don't happen, you get frustrated. Well, that's not that's not a sign or a symptom of patience. Okay? Like, for instance, the year 2000 uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Alright? We're back in one west, you know, in which pretty much everybody taught that, you know, the year 2000 was the, was the year that the Lord was going to uh, return. But when it didn't happen, you'll see that, you see that the apostles and the elders spoke on this. And they said that certain men got jacked up over there, man. Mm -hmm. Their mind got all messed up. They stopped, you know, serving the Lord. Because they wasn't waiting on your house child with patience, man. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. And I got a quick precept dealing with patience. This is um, James 1 and 3. It says, know this. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. Okay? So now that we have that gift of faith that's given unto us on high, that gift is being tried with patience. Alright? When you look up the word or you look into the word patience, it means to suffer. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now what 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 are we suffering? Alright, we suffering, you know, all the trials and tribulations that come with being in the flesh, but it's trying our faith, it's testing our faith, it's making our faith durable, okay, it's just like a diamond testing, you got to have a diamond in order to test it, yeah. so in order to have patience, you got to have faith, because if you don't have faith, you ain't going to be patient, you're going to be seeking instant gratification about everything, that's why you look at these people in the world and all they're about is a quick buck, a quick come up, they don't want to put the work in, they don't want to wait, they don't want to you know, build anything from the ground up through patience and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. They just want everything, you know, handed to them on the silver spoon. Yeah, right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it says, knowing this, that the triangle of your faith works with patience, but let patience have her perfect work. All right? Because when you, when you allow the process to take place, you're allowing the Yahweh Shema Rishai to, to show you the, per the perfection of that work. Alright? So if you get tired of going to the highways and byways, then you're not going to see why that work was perfect because you wasn't patient. You rested. You gave up. Mm -hmm. You didn't finish it. So now when you look at your, your, uh, your track record, it's not consistent. And then I'm talking about these guys that came into this thing and uh, that, that left, man. They turned their back on the Lord. All right, you didn't let patience have, have this perfect work. You lost faith. All right, because the Lord was trying you. Just as he tries us to see if we're going to hang in there, we're going to hold on, or we're going to jump ship and take another route. And that's what you see individuals that's not sincere. That's what you see them do. Okay? They jump ship as soon as the, uh, the, the kitchen get hot, man. All right? So it says that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. All right? Because through the patience... Of Yahweh Bashem Shah, the Lord is going to give us everything if we wait. 
That's why the saying goes, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So, it, it's all right, it's all, when we read the scriptures, it's always right there, uh, hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Faith and patience. All right? Because in order to, 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 to fully be a faithful man, you got to be patient. Look at the apostles. Look at the elders. Look at other brothers in certain situations. Some brothers been in situations two, three years, just being patient. Hoping and, 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 and waiting for you how about some outside to free them from that circumstance. Some brothers have infirmities. But they're being patient and they're still have, being faithful that eventually one day the how about some is going to deliver them from that particular circumstance. So patience, if we continue to be patient, we're going to be perfected in the eyes of the Lord, meaning spiritually. Okay? So now let's go back to uh, the second Thessalonians. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is 2 Peter 3 and 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And the, uh, the bishop referenced, you know, the year 2000 doctrine. I mean, uh, that was being taught, you mm -hmm. know, that true men do a loop, you know, and they ultimately lost patience, man, and fell out the truth. All right? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Okay, just because it didn't come in doesn't mean that, you know, the Lord isn't coming back. Right, okay. Uh, it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long suffering to usward. And that word long suffering goes into patience, man. Mm -hmm. All right. So to usward, you know, we are gonna wait it out, man, and we are gonna hold fast to to the faith, man. Right. All right. Until the Lord do come. Okay. It says, uh, but the Lord, it's like it, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. But they all should come to repentance, mm -hmm. all right? And while we're in this grace period waiting upon the Lord, it's the time to repent, man, and right. get yourself right, all right? So when that day do come, hey, hey, your salvation will be here, man, mm -hmm. all right? And you won't have to meet all the pledges that is written there in the scriptures, man. You'll right. be delivered from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, back in 2 Thessalonians, mm -hmm. uh, 3 and verse 4. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will do things which, which we command you. Yeah, showing that the, the, the Apostle Paul and the other uh, apostles and servants gave out certain commands. For instance, Apostle Hart gave out a command. You know, do, go to camp once a week, do uh, three videos a week. Now, when you look read the scripture, you ain't going to have a scripture that, that says do three videos a week. Or go to camp once a week. That's not in the scripture. But the, but it says what? Be diligence to make our call of election short. So with the apostles being as spiritual as they are, they created a command to keep us diligent. That's all it is. So so those commands really fall within the text. Mm -hmm. So we have to be obedient. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying that, that you both do and will do the things which we command you. Okay, meaning that back then, when they were overseeing the different churches in Asia Minor and all throughout Greece and in Rome, all right, they, they gave them certain commands that they had to keep, all right, that probably wasn't necessarily written in the text. But then you got God, yeah, it's probably a commandment for men, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, that's other scriptures. All right, keep reading, bro. Huh. Verse 5. Uh, Verse 6. Now verse 5. And the Lord directs your heart into the love of the Most High and into the patience waiting for Mashiach. Uh -huh. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which you have received of us. Yeah. So yeah, you got guys, I don't want to do three videos with you. I don't want to, I can't go to camp, uh, 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 you know, every, uh, um, every week. I can't make it. I can't, I can't pay time. I can't do this. But they still want to be a part of it, a great ministry. Yeah, hey, the scripture says, withdraw well, yourselves from every brother that walk up this order, you know. All right? So you just got a, a, you got a brother with these, you know, this thing and they created a pattern of disorderly conduct. Hey, well, you withdraw yourself from that, man. So necessarily mean you got to be, automatically ousted or, or ostracized, but you you know what, you're like, no man, brother right here, you been tripping a little lately, man, you know, 
or you withdraw yourself from it. Because you don't want you don't want to develop a pattern of bad work for your skin, man. A pattern of rebellion. You know, a pattern of being stiff necked and hard headed, man. Alright? The Lord created the structure of a camp so that we can learn order prior to going into the kingdom of heaven. That's why we have, you know, a, a camp here, second and third in command, fourth in command. We have different officers and, and, and different uh, captains and, and, and disciples and things of that nature. Alright? So we can see how to, to, to deal with a group of men in an orderly fashion. So if you don't hold yourself accountable to, to the things that are upheld in the camp, you walk in disorderly, man. And the scripture said you withdraw yourself from that book. Alright? Well, no, nah, you know, I ain't, you know, I ain't keeping the Sabbath how y'all keep it. You know, keep going, bro. So, no seven. Verse 7, uh, for yourselves know how how we ought to follow us, for we behave, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Mm -hmm. that, that's Paul speaking. He said we not we have not behaved ourselves disorderly among you. Meaning they were moving and, and carrying themselves in an honest fashion. Alright, go ahead, bro. Verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for not, mm -hmm. but wrought with labor. And prevail night and day. Uh huh. Yeah. He said neither did we eat any any man's bread for naught. Meaning the, the apostles they weren't going around to the different churches of Asia Minor just eating and drinking and, and getting money, and they weren't putting in no work. Mm -hmm. They weren't abusing their power, man. All right. They were actually being being an actual example on how to serve the Lord, on how to deal in, in order, on how to deal respectfully. They were traveling to the different churches. And they were showing how to do it. And they were doing the work. Alright? They were prophesying, man. They was teaching. Okay? Keep going, bro. It says, that we might, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meaning, yeah, when they, you know, when they came down here, they were doing this, and they were doing that, and they were doing all this, and they Hey, the, the apostle said we, hey, that we, we was unchargeable. We was not chargeable, man. All right? Then you, you, when the apostles came to the different church, churches, they received an a, 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 a honest report. Hey, for instance, when Apostle Ramlai came out to our camp, all right, he wasn't chargeable, man. All right? He came out here, he, 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 he cleaned up shop through the Spirit. He, he, has, he showed us how to do certain things, uh, um, Pertaining to the camp, all right. They found us a new location to teach. Uh, set up the order down here, all right. And he he, uh, he 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 served brothers. He cooked for brothers. He made brothers plates. Made brothers drinks. All right. He showed love, man. Hugged brothers. Gave brothers money. You know. Cried when he did did a lot, man. All right. He 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 wasn't chargeable when he was amongst us, man. You don't have anything bad to say about the pattern that he showed us, because he showed us a pattern of good works when he was here. All right? And we take those good works, and we implement those good works into our walk, and we show them to the rest of the brethren. Man. That's why Paul said that. He said, for you, for yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we have not behaved ourselves disorderly among you. And I'm pretty sure the rest of the brothers out here can say the same for the apostles and the elders if they've ever come to your church. All right, or if you ever visited them, you will see that they're very orderly, they're very brotherly, they're very considerate, all right? They're humble, all right? They're charitable, okay? They're, they're straightforward, okay? So, yeah, we're going to follow men like that, man. We're supposed to follow men like that, all right? You don't see them not doing the work but always got their hands out, you know? They always upload videos. They always on the highways and byways every week. Contending for the faith. We always getting fed. But then when they come around, they always contributing. They always expressing their, grat their gratitude towards the younger men for, you know, doing their thing. So we, we ought to follow men like that because they're unchargeable. The rest of you guys got charges on you, man. All right? It's like you you uh, you uh following a cat in the streets. They got, a, uh, they got 10 felonies. Bro, he don't know how to do it. He got 10 felonies in the streets and you don't run from him, he failed. Miserably. Why would you follow somebody like that? Got hella charges. 
the apostles are, are not chargeable. Okay? Amongst us. Alright? Let's keep going, bro. Second Thessalonians 3 and 9. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves to an example unto you, so you to follow us. That's right. It says not that we have not power because Apostle Paul, he understood that he did have a level of power over the churches. He was an overseer. He was an apostle of the Gentiles. So he had a level of power. He had a level of rank. But he said we don't we don't uh, um, we don't move, you know, not that we that you know we can't do this because we have not the power. But he's saying that, you know, we're doing this to make ourselves an example to you. Okay? We make we, we want to show you the example on how to be. So they were very impressionable men. And they left a good impression on the churches, man. Okay? And I see the comment board lighting up. Hey, Salawam to all you brothers. Y'all about some all shy. By a similar copy of You know, I'm going to get a, a, a precept off the comment board from uh, the brother of Rachel's eye. This is uh, Philippians 3 and 17. Mm -hmm. It says, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. All right? So this is uh, Paul speaking again to the church of the Philippians. And he's saying, um, be followers together uh, of me. All right? Because Paul understood that he wasn't moving in God. He wasn't trying to, you know, uh, suck all the resources out of the churches and leave them barren. You know, and go and take the money that he get from the different churches and go clubbing and go, you know, spending money on hoes and hookers and, and not teaching, getting drunk. That's not that's not what Paul was in, was thinking about. Paul's mindset was to build the church, was to establish the sheep of your house God. That's why he said, follow me. Okay? So you got your naysayers out here that get on, you know, get on these videos and you get on the comment board and y'all follow me. You know, you don't have to join no camp, this and that. Well, what about when Paul said, be ye followers of me, even as I am of Yahweh Shai? So yes, we do have to follow uh, actual fleshly carnal man, but we have to follow him in the spirit. Okay? We have to follow his spirit, not his body. Follow his spirit. He's just in, a, in, in the physical realm with us. But we have to follow that spirit. Because that spirit is being led by a greater spirit, which is Yahweh Bashan So you got to be spiritual. You got to be a spiritual man in this thing, man. Okay? Uh, you, you go back to um, the Thessalonians. Come on. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. For even when we were with you, this we command, commanded you. That if any would not work, neither should he eat. Mm -hmm. And that's talking about uh, uh, spiritually and literally. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because both of them, it, it, it applies, man. All right? If you don't go out here and work and, and earn your wages, how you going to eat? How you going to get some money? How you going to feed your family if you, if you don't want to work? Now, that's a different thing. You lose a job or, you know, you're in a rough period trying to get back right. You know, the most high going to provide. If you see your effort. But if you just slow balling it, kicking, cruise, and cruise control, not worry, hey man, you gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get right, man. That's the same thing in the spirit. If you don't put in the work in the spirit, all right. If you don't go out here laboring in the spirit and, and sow in the spirit, then how you gonna reap anything to eat it? How you gonna eat the fruits of the spirit if you don't sow? Them? Okay. So it's the same thing. Go ahead, bro. Verse eleven. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not all, at all, but are busybodies. Right. It says working not at all, but are busybodies. And you don't want to be in that mindset. Because idle mind leads to what? Yeah. To wickedness, man. Yeah. Alright? And that's just like women. You know, housewives? Mm -hmm. what's, one, what's one characteristic that housewives all have in common? Mm -hmm. they, when they get bored, what they do? Mm -hmm. They gossip. Be a busy guy. And they ain't working. They ain't got no work to do. Yeah. You know? So they sit there, they get on the phone, and they, they, they gossip. When you look at these shows, the Atlanta Housewives, which, you know, me personally, I've never watched these shows, but, you know, when you hear about them, you see snippets of it. The only thing you see is just, just a series of gossip, man. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because these bitches ain't working, man. They, they, they supposed to be a housewife, but they got made. You are the housewife. 
you know? So, you know, that's a characteristic of a, um, of a woman. You know, gospel. Yeah, 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 you know, see, he wasn't tied all the way up to the top. Yeah. You know, his head, you know, his head wrap was crooked. You know, he, you know, he, you know, no. <laughs> you know, yeah. you want to be a busybody, man, meddling. Yeah, yeah, being a tail bearer and meddling in all kind of different affairs. You know that 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 you just you utilize in the gossip. Now, yeah, you know, now the head brothers, you know, brothers gonna speak on certain things, but the things that being spoken about is always going to be brought to the light, you know. Sometimes you got to have a, a, a little uh, confidence, you know, something come up, you got to have a confidence, but when you have that confidence, you got to deal with it. That's different. But just for the sake of murmuring and gossiping, hey, man, do, do a lesson, man. Go, go for a walk. You know, like the brother said, go do some burpees, man. <laughs> you know, exercise, man, you know. So that, that's what, what Paul is saying, you know, there was some dis walking disorderly, working not at all, but uh, being busy by him. All right? Yeah, just, just going around, just getting into all kinds of shit, man. All right? Go to verse 12, bro. Okay. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord, the house of Mashiach, that with quiet, but with quietness, they work and eat their own bread. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now I got a quick precept. This is our first Thessalonians 4 and 11. It says in that you study to be quiet and do your own business and to work with your own hands as we, as we commanded you. What? So notice that, you know, Paul is continuously telling the church of uh, Thessalonians to work with their own hands and be quiet. Mm -hmm. Alright, because there's a lot of, you know, uh, you know, lack of days things going on. And they was um, you know, probably gossiping and tell them. Man. That's why Paul reiterated this in the second in the second book of Thessalonians about working with your hands and, and, and the quiet. You know, study to be quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, even you know when you you know you shouldn't study. You know to 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 boast. You know to boast of your knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know when you get on camera, you know you just, you know you're trying to boast on everything. And, you know that's that's the main reason you study. You're supposed to study. To, to learn it for yourself, okay? You're supposed to study this word so you can edify, you know, another brother, not boast of yourself and make boast of yourself, all right? Speak say, if a man shall boast, we shall boast uh, that, that we know the Father, okay? Uh, matter of fact, let me just get it, you know, so that you can have me bring it up. Let me just get it real quick. It should be in Jeremiah 9. There will be one second. Okay, because you know, we both, we're supposed to both in, 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 in that we know you're all about somebody shy, man. This is um, Jeremiah 9 and 24. It says, But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and know of me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So we, if we're going to glory or boast, man, let it be that, you know, we know the word, that, that, that you know, we, that, that we know y'all by Shemal Shai, that he, you know, he's a loving power, he's kind, he's just, he, 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 he's going to judge the earth, he's merciful. Those are the things that we glory in, not ourselves, man, not, not, we don't glory in self-knowledge, mm -hmm. okay? It's vain, it's vain. Yeah, yeah, so this is uh, Sirach 89, it says, miss not the discourse of the elders. But they also learned that their father, and they tied back into uh, what the bishop was saying too about it. Hey, hey, yeah, we, we follow men, but it's all according to the spirit. Mm -hmm. All right? You know, you see a man going, uh, snap off, and you know, you steady following him, knowing right. that he got down and, and right. You know, but as long as it's according to the spirit and according to, you know, the, the scriptures, man, hey, that's why the Lord put these men down there, man, to be elders and teachers. Teachers, okay? You're not gonna come down here directly and deal with you, you know, face to face. Right. But that ain't how the Lord deals, man. Mm -hmm. He has people set up in His stead, man, to you know, uh, 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 show you the way. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, it says, "Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learn of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding and to give answer as need required." So that's why we study and then we. Uh, 
this, this, this wisdom, man, to get at them, not to brag or boast or seem like some some damn guru. Mm -hmm. All right, it's, it's for the edification, man. You know, uh, if somebody come up to you and want to know about, you know, the scripture, that's why you study, man. Mm -hmm. And you also study to show yourself the proof that it's right to study. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's right, man. I got a quick precept so I can go to the right to that. Um, this is um. Ecclesiastes 3 and 17. My son, go on with thy business in meekness. Mm -hmm. So so shall thou be beloved of him that is approved. Yeah, so you want to take this business of ours, which of course, you know, this this uh this ministry, this service is, is, is likened unto a business. Alright? So we're supposed to go on with, with this business in the spirit of meekness. Alright? And if the brother commends you, and if you can go in there and maybe. Hey, you hey, hey, call all y'all about some outside, brother. You know, I'm glad I'm able to, you know, to edify. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I've been, you know, I've been to the Bible since I was two. Yeah. You know, this is what I do. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've been, you know, I've been, you know, into the Word since I was two and a half. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Stop. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you know? No. All right? Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're talking about, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you got to be about the Lord. You know? It ain't about, it ain't about you know, the individuals. It's about the how about you know, the side. Receiving his, his glory, man. Receiving his, his just deep. Receiving his respect. His credence, man. All right? It ain't about us, man. We serve. He's trying to serve the Lord, man. Yeah. So we are commended for the, for the work. Hey, give that praise back to you. How about some other shot? All right? So, yeah, you want to, it says, So shalt thou be beloved of him that is approved. You know? Meaning that the Lord will, will, will show you love because you, you, you express that humility and that, grati that gratitude with this ministry. All right? This service of ours should not make us proud. Mm -hmm. All right? It's supposed to make us humble. All right? Understanding that we serve a power that's about to judge the planet Earth. Understanding that we serve a power that watched it, that, that, that served the service. Okay? So that's supposed to drive our humility to make us more humble. Considering the, the, you know, what's expected of us, you know, there's more, there's more that we're going to have to deal with down the road. And it's supposed to, it's supposed to make us more humble. Okay? Go ahead, bro. Verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary of well-doing. Mm -hmm. And if any man obey not our word, by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him. That's right. So Paul said, now, if there's any man, when you read this epistle to the church, if there's a man that, 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 uh, that obey not the word by this epistle, meaning everything that he was writing about in this particular epistle, the apostle is saying, know him. All right? Meaning take a mental note, and it say, have no company with, with him. All right? Meaning you withdraw yourself from him, like you said, if you walk in disorderly, have no company with that man. Right? All right? So if you got a, a, a brother out here, he gets suspended. All right? Hey, you, you, supposed to, you ain't supposed to have no company with him, man. All right? But considering the, the, the limitations that's placed upon him, if he's suspended for six months and he ain't supposed to have no communication with him, don't have no company with him, man. You know, obviously the most high took him through that process for a particular reason. Or well, you got a brother that's, you know, ain't been doing the work, ain't been, you know, growing, ain't been building, ain't been dedicating time to the ministry, ain't been fellowshipping, or whatever the case may be. Hey, when you tell him what you got to tell him, and you let him do his thing, man. You see if he's going to grow, he's going to come out of it, man. All right? Because you don't want to put, you don't want to, hey, you don't want to associate yourself with bad company. All right? Not that brothers, you know, they look at brothers in, in, in the faith as bad company. But sometimes you're going to have them, them little knuckleheads, man. You know, and you don't want to just be hanging around no knuckleheads all the time, man. All right? That's just like in, in school, man. You know, you hang around a bunch of knuckleheads all the time. Eventually, by default, man, you're going to start getting in trouble, man. Mm -hmm. Birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. All right? So it's the same thing in the spirit, man. You see a rebel or a knucklehead that's just creating a pattern of, um, of being, you know, off and disorderly. You hang around him like that, man. You do the work, man. And, and, and warn him. Okay? Go ahead, bro. He says, and have, no, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
yet count him not as an enemy, mm -hmm. but admonish him as a brother. That's right, but you don't cast him off as an enemy yet either. Right. No, you don't do that. You admonish him as a brother, meaning you want him. All right? You let him know, hey, man, you know, brother, you're going off, man. You know, brother, you've been going off. You ain't been doing this. You ain't been doing that. All right? You've been, you know, you've been doing this. You've been doing that. Whatever you got to say, let him know as a brother. But don't just write him off as an enemy, but you got to let him know. You got to admonish him. And you got to kind of keep a little distance, man. Let him work it out. So he improved then, you know, we show the improvement, you know, hey, do your thing. All right? But hey, man, this scripture say that, man. Lay no lay no hands, lay hands on no man suddenly. And it also say, uh, uh, trust not in every friend, for he will utterly supplant. So you gotta have a, a level of balance, man. You gotta you gotta be wise. You know, you don't want to just be hanging around brothers that that, that you know re rebellious, man. All right? Go ahead, bro. Verse, two, verse 16, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you all. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is the token in every epistle, mm -hmm. so I write. Mm -hmm. The grace of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, be with you all. That's right. So Paul was saying that this is the, this is the dream that he wrote with his own hand, which is a token, which is the token in every epistle. Okay, so Paul was he was speaking uh, to this particular church um, for a reason, man. And I want to give this last piece up going back to how Paul and the rest of the the, uh, the, the the elders that Paul established that went on the mission with him, uh, was his name Epaphras and, and you know these other guys, you know they are uh, archipus, all right. They created a, a, a pattern of not being chargeable by the rest of the Israelites. Man. This is um, 2 Corinthians 11 and 9. It says, And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. But that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. So Paul was talking to the Corinthians right here because they wasn't helping them out how they, how they should. Okay? They wasn't, they wasn't really... You know, contributing to Paul and make sure he was taken care of as they should have. So he said, you know, if I was lacking in something, he said, look, man, the brothers from Macedonia helped me out. They all they come through for me. So you know, brothers like acting like I'm robbing the church or something. He said, look, man, when I was when I was wanting, you know, I ain't chargeable to no church. You know, he said the brothers in Macedonia took care of me. You know, if I'm not mistaken, he's talking about um, the Church of Philippi and Thessalonians. All right? Now it says, um, uh, um, it says, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied, and in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. So he said, you know, Paul was like, you know, I ain't going to try to be a burden on, on the, the brothers in Corinth. So the brothers in Macedonia would, would send money, you know, to make sure he was good on his, uh, on his missionary, man. All right, so that goes into, you know, how we, you know, we have to take care of the apostles and elders as well. All right, make sure we're paying our tithes, make sure, you know, we're contributing, we're being charitable spiritually to the rest of the brethren. You know, and then just creating the pattern of, of, of just good labors and good works um, so that we can be, you know, unchargeable, man, and, 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 and the brethren and the y'all by some other side, due to the fact that we built up right now, okay? You want to say any closing words, bro? Con, con. So you know, with that, you know, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and wrap it up. You know, uh, Lord willing, it was edifying. Um, until the next time, we're gonna give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Makakadash. All right, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule the well, and uh, peace and safety to the elect. Until next time, we say Shalom. Amen.